Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It is the 20th of February, Asia time. Thanks for being here. Topics for today, action items, Debian 12 and JDK 17. Reminder on handling regressions, detached plugin documentation, an update to describe that, and then pull requests of note. And Gavin Mogan has added one. Very good. Okay. Any other topics that need to be on the agenda for today? Not for me. Okay. Well, so I would say let's let's shift pull requests of note high on the list, or rather we'll focus on trying to um Get everything else done so we can get to pull requests of note very quickly. Okay. All right. So first item, no action, no open action items. Win. Second item, Debian 12, Bookworm. Uh, so the next release of Debian is planned for release in 2023, likely either April or May or June. All right. So they freeze in March. And final freeze is expected probably a month or two later. Okay. When they do that, right now we've already detected that they're no longer delivering OpenJDK 11 at all. It's not available as a package. Oh. So you can only get Java 17. That's preparing for, I think, the eventual release of Java 21, which wow. is probably 12 months or less than 12 months away. So, so they're they're admitting that they're ending the life of OpenJDK 11 on their platform because end of support for JDK 11 will happen at least the the active support will happen in 2023 already towards the end of the year. Okay. So the proposal in that Kevin Kevin Martins and Bruno Verachten and I discussed was what we're going to do is we're going to update the documentation beginning in about April or May. So beginning when this releases, we'll update the documentation to describe Java 17 install instead of Java 10, Java 11. Okay. Both are supported. Not open JDK. What's that? What about non-open JDK? Is anybody using that? Oh, in fact, many, many places are using uh, so that's the next one. Oh. Containers for containers, we're using uh, we use Eclipse Temerin, and and it continues to support it and works Java eleven and works just fine. Works on Debian. So for our container images, no problem. Okay. The challenge is for people who install it directly with a Linux package, uh, for them, they'll see, they won't be able to use the instructions that say do Java 11 because Java 11 won't be available. Right. And so what we'll do is we will just describe Java 17. And if they want to use Java 11, they can, but we'll describe Java 17. Now there's an additional twist on this Red Hat has proposed, Oliver Gonja of Red Hat and one of his colleagues have proposed to add a universal base image, nine. So this UBI is the container image, simplified container image based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Okay. And so Oliver Gonja here has, has proposed that they'll create, they would, we would add a Docker container using UBI 9, we've already got one that uses UBI 8. And so it makes sense. And the question to, to them was, they proposed initially Java 11, and our question back was, could we please just do Java 17? Ah. And that way, this is already moving towards the notion, let's do Java 17 rather than Java 11. Right. And we've been delighted, actually, with the results with Java 17. There are cases where it actually runs better than Java 11. Wow. So we're, we're really pleased with the results with Java 17 and, and Jenkins. 
And so the idea is that's where we plan to go with it. No action on this until the release of Debian 12. But, but then come April, May, or June, whenever that releases, we'll make that update. Okay. Next topic was handling regressions on the Jenkins.io site. So we've had some episodes in the past where we, we made some change to Jenkins.io to improve the look and feel or to improve some part of the site. And inadvertently, that change also caused a loss of functionality. So what we're doing is discussing and proposing a formal, how do we handle regressions policy? Uh, as one example of a regression, we had this one where it's kind of embarrassing. Back in November, we made a change that broke the jumbotron, the thing that scrolls this bottom image. Uh -huh. So it was stuck on one plot place. And <laughs> bisecting, we discovered that, Vandit Singh actually discovered that a commit from November of 2022 is the one that broke it. Ah. So we were months without detecting this particular regression. And so we said, hey, obviously this one isn't a rush to fix it. Because nobody's complained either. Right. None of us had detected it, right? And so it can't be that urgent. But Zbigniew Konechny proposed the fix, and there it is, fixed. Ah. So it's back. But what we proposed as a po general policy is we're going to use the same regression policy for Jenkins.io as Jenkins Core uses. So if a significant regression is not resolved promptly, we'll revert the change. We'd rather go back to base functionality than add something new and lose significant capability. What was the new functionality that broke this? Just curious. Uh, it was upgrading from an older version of the bootstrap JavaScript library and replacing an unmaintained library with a maintained library that does some important functions, this popper JS library. Okay. So the, the upgrade was valuable. It really was. The change mm -hmm. that, that made this was valuable and truly useful, but it had this undesired side effect. Right. What Zubinik was able to do though, was he was able to fix the, the, pro the root problem and not have to revert the change. Wonderful. So, so the idea is significant regressions that aren't resolved promptly, we revert them. Minor regressions will take, will allow more time. Now, what we've done is we've added two issue labels, one for regression and one for major regression. Okay. That way, if something is flagged as a regression, we know we need to take action on this. And the idea was discuss it. Any concerns from you, Meg, about that kind of a policy? No, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, good. I would also so, add, do we have a checklist for release? Uh, there really isn't a concept of, oh, you mean, when you say release, you mean Jenkins or, core release? Or something, I don't know. It's sort of, I mean, it's it's an ongoing problem. It's like every so often somebody should just read these pages. Just look at them. Oh, oh, yeah. So no, we do not. That's that's a fair point. We certainly have a checklist for releases of Jenkins core. Right. But that's that's a different thing. I think you were asking more a checklist for review of the documentation. Right. Right. That is a big bugaboo of doc like code is you can automatically check that things build and stuff but to make you know some of this other stuff there's the human element still that just got to look at it and say right well and and the human element is there no matter what there are all sorts of examples in the jenkins documentation of things that have have become outdated and are no longer relevant because the world has moved around it right it was it may have been exactly perfect when it was first written Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's no longer accurate. And, and therefore, so for instance, the Linux install instructions talk about Red Hat and CentOS, but CentOS as an operating system, now that CentOS, CentOS 7 is the last viable operating system of CentOS, okay. and it will end its life in 2024. So there's not a lot of value to us actually talking about CentOS 7. 
Right. And it's yes, it, it exists. No, we really don't want it. So those kinds of things, they become dated or not less, less valuable as time goes on. Exactly. All right. So that one's covered. Anything else on the regressions topic? Looks good. Okay. Next topic then was there's a concept that we've dis we've realized may justify more documentation. What it is, is let's look at a plugin to talk about what this, this means. So let's look at Oracle, JDK, and Tool Installer. Okay, so this, this thing was split from Jenkins Core many, many years ago. So it used to be part of Jenkins Core and not even a plugin. It was made a plugin. And when it was made a plugin, there is a risk that other plugins might depend on the APIs that it had been contributing yeah. to core and is, was, is no longer yep. contributing to core. And that's what this list of implied dependencies means. And if you look at the size of the scroll bar, uh -huh. you can see that it's, for this example, quite a large number of plugins that have an implied dependency on this particular um, this particular plugin. Uh -huh. Well, the problem is if someone wants to remove this plugin from their installation and they have one or more of these plugins already installed, they cannot remove this. If they attempt to remove it, the removal will be attempted and Jenkins will then re-inject a copy of the plugin back into the system uh, for its own safety. Okay. Now, now that concept of implied plugins is described here, and I like the description. It's actually quite good talking about what a, an implied plugin, an implied plugin dependency means. Uh, but this becomes more complicated if we instead take a different plugin that's now been deprecated. So this plugin called the WMI Windows Agents plugin is not just split, but it was split from Jenkins Core and is now deprecated. Uh -huh. Meaning users get another message that says, hey, this thing is, should, is deprecated and it should be removed. But then when they try to remove it, it would tell them, sorry, you can't remove this because it has the, you have these other plugins installed that are implied dependencies. And what can they, is there anything they can do about, I mean? Yeah, they have to, they have to rebuild the plugins with implied dependencies to require a newer Jenkins version. Ah. And that's, well, you, we saw the earlier one, right? That, that could be a huge effort with this one, for example, with its, what looks like hundreds of implied dependencies. Now, these are universally older plugins, right? They're plugins whose minimum Jenkins version is very, very old. But that doesn't mean that some of them aren't still useful. People do not upgrade the way we think they should. Right. Well, and, and for instance, if we look, there are some of these plugins. Let's see if I can find the one that's the example. Ace Editor. Here we go. The JavaScript GUI Lib Ace Editor Bundle. Uh -huh. This one provides a, 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 a library. It has 275,000 installations. Oh. So it's used very widely. Why? Well, because it's a dependency of Blue Ocean. Uh -huh. Right? And oh, I take it back. And it's a, it's a dependency of pipeline, uh -huh. not blue ocean. My mistake. So pipeline is depends on it, and and so that that challenge means everybody with pipeline has this installed. Uh -huh. Therefore, they can't remove the JDK, um, the JDK, the Oracle JDK tool without this warning message that says, hey, we're going to give it back to you. That So 
this all this complication, all this long story means we think we need to do some do some more documentation to describe it. Mm -hmm. And the first one here on the list is actually resolved in Jenkins 2.386 and later. So we we fixed it. And the next one we may we may someday want to resolve the others. Well, for instance, you might say, hey, I want to get rid of subversion. I never use it. Well, if you have any one of those old plugins, you can't get rid of subversion. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of story for this. Now, really, right now, it's mostly a how do we document this so that we can point people who have a question to this thing and say, here's it. Long term, there's probably a way in code to make this much better, but that'll have to be seen. Any questions? Nope. All right. Next topic then was the let's get to the fun part. All right. Okay. So pull requests of note. What I'd propose is let's spend our time reviewing these things and just talk together about them to see what we think. Okay. So here is a change from Gavin Mogan proposing a UI change. All right, so the change here is a proposal. Okay, so we've got Okay. Okay, so they're they're going. Do you see what's happening here? What they're doing is they're going through a a series of steps to try to improve the, the appearance of the improve the, the look of it. Yeah. So let's let's now one of the the cool things here, if I understand, yes, one of the cool things is you see the show environments that's right here. Uh huh. What Gavin has provided us is a way to look at this in a deployment context. Ah. So this is a Netlify hosted look at the various parts and pieces. So I click to footer here and here's how it looks. Whoops, where is the, where's the improve this page? Oh, oh, got it, okay. Okay, here it is the default. Here, if it has a source path, no source path. Ah, good, okay. So if we know the location of the page's source code, for instance, we know it's an ADOC file or it's backed by some, some other um, a markdown file, then this is what appears with this improve this page link. Okay. If we don't know the source path, we can, we can still have the report a problem link because that will let them go to Jenkins.io's issue, GitHub issues page. If we don't know that, we get the default like this and external property, external property. What does, what does external property do differently? Do you see any difference between these two? Uh, 
I don't see any difference, but for me, they look great. Now I want, one of the things they did was they, they changed the size of these things. So for instance, what if we are down here on a, on a cell phone like this, that still looks pretty good to me. Yep. And if I get even smaller, it still looks good. And it's still holding up very nicely. Okay, and I can't even go any smaller than that now. So I feel pretty good about the about the layout. Yeah. You're okay with it as well, Meg? I am. Great. I would like to know what the external property is all about. Yeah, that and so I don't have any guess on what that means, but I'm going to trust that Gavin knows this stuff really, really well. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say, all right. I'm going to say that, all right, so. Meg, Meg and I, and I reviewed this during documentation office hours. Hours, we think it is a very nice improvement. We checked various screen sizes, various widths, and saw no issues at any of the widths. We think it is ready to ship. On the sample that we were looking at, can we click on those? Does anything happen? Is it just are those actors? Sure. So what we'll do is take you to this page. That is the expected location. So that's good. What and I'm so wondering I, is if it, the external property takes us to something different. And it probably does. I just, in this case, the property has no value. So I would not expect it okay, to, be, yeah. to be going anywhere particularly useful. Right. Okay, so I'm going to say com comment, and then I'm going to give an approval. Let's see, here we go. Okay. Very cool. All right. Okay with that? Yep. All right. Then let's take the next one. So I'm going to note here approved by Mark and Meg. Great. Okay. The next one is very large. Okay. This is, and I'm I'm quite impressed by Vandit Singh's work on in the documentation, because Vandit has accepted, has taken on quite challenging topics and done very well with them. In this one, an updating section. So just like we have installing Jenkins, yes. we noted that we really need an updating Jenkins section as well. Discussion, yes. But when we look at installing Jenkins we're reminded that installing Jenkins is not just one page. It's, let's get it here. Installing Jenkins is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages, eight pages. So eight distinct ways of doing the install plus offline yet another. So, so we've got eight or nine, depending how you count them, ways to do installation and upgrade is different in each of them. Right. So so upgrade 
is is likely to be every bit as complicated as initial install. Okay. So let's take a look at the the prototype deployment. Okay, so documentation, and it intentionally is not in the initial table of contents in the at the top level menu. Here's installing and updating is here. Okay. So first let's remind ourselves which things are here. So Docker, Kubernetes, Linux, Mac, Windows, Other, and War. Linux, Mac, Windows, Other. So we're missing Docker. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay, but let's look at at Linux at least and see what, what it tells us here. Okay, oh, whoops, a service? No, 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 no. Okay, already I see a problem. One, it's not, there isn't always a service. I'm not sure that there's always a service command. Let me see on, on which service. Oh, no, there is on, okay, all right. Is this part of standard? Okay, all right. So let me check with one other place. Oh, yes, okay, all right. And the syntax is service script command. So it's service Jenkins stop. Oh, except, uh-uh. <laughs> that won't work. Okay, good. There's a reason we read man pages. <laughs> okay, so here, service runs a system five init script in as predictable an environment as possible. So the problem is Jenkins no, you no longer uses system five init. Right. We use system D now. And so it needs to use system control rather than, than service. And I believe the command is stop, but here again, it may be that there's not much point in doing the stop. Yeah, so, okay, so this one at least needs to be changed to use system control rather than system D or rather than, than system five in it. Yeah. Okay, so back here, and let's go find the comments. Are you okay with this, Meg, as, oh, in yeah. terms of how we're approaching this? Yes, yes. Okay, so, um, let's see, it was, it was service. Okay, yeah, so. System CTL. Jenkins on Linux variant, Jenkins installed with Linux installers uses system D, the service command on Red Hat Enterprise Linux and its derivatives says that it runs system five in its scripts it does not mention running system D scripts. Commands. Was This section was for Linux, right? Right. Red Hat, right? Well, it's for all variants of Linux. Uh, so the Ubuntu 2020, 2204 service man page, says that it runs 
both system five in it and system D commands. I think we should use system D rather than using uh, system five in it. I think, yeah. So system control, and now I've got to look up the, the syntax. So just a minute while we do that. System CTL. Managing system D services. And let's look at stopping services. Stop Jenkins. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, so take a backup. Here, I think rather we should link to the backup instructions because this could be a terrible way to do a backup. There are, for instance, with snapshotting file systems, there are significantly better ways to do a backup. Right. Now let's find those better ways. Backup. Uh, nope, that's not it. So how about, it was, I don't remember if it was managing Jenkins. Or administering. Yeah, so it must be system administration. Yes, backing up and restoring Jenkins. Okay, here we go. And this, I remember this, this gives instructions about which things you must back up, which are not required to be backed up, etc. Yeah, so let's link to replace with a link to the backup page because there, there are many different ways to perform a backup and they depend on the environment. For example, if running Ubuntu 2020 or 2204 with BTRFS file system, the best backup may be to take a file system snapshot. Not a tar file. Right. Right. They're just, they're faster. Uh, likewise, with OpenSUSE uh, 15.4. Um, or is it that... Oh, no, no, I take it back. It's not BTRFS, it's CFS. Likewise, OpenSUSE 15.4 with uh, BTRFS. It's OpenSUSE that, that does better file system. ZFS from the BSD people is, is on Ubuntu. So now we need to replace this with see the backup instructions for see the backup instructions for alternatives And now we turn this into a hyperlink. Okay, and take that out. Okay. Seem reasonable so far, Meg? Seems reasonable. Should we, does that chapter have verification? Should we say um, um, backup and verify? 
or uh, back question. To Yes. So it's it's actually in the it's actually in right it's here validating a backup. Yeah. So it definitely is part of it. I'm not sure that I'm ready to put validate into the. This is a, a pure safeguard. Uh -huh. But but good question. Should we? But I'm thinking a backup that's not been verified. It's not a. It's not right. A, that's that's a really scary thing, right? That's right. how. And, and it, you know, people read the first half and, oh, here's how I do my backup. And mm -hmm. I don't know how much of a Jewish mother just want to become on this stuff. And there, you've got to draw the line. So it was just well, a question. Yeah. I'm going to leave it as is, although actually I see that I've done damage here that I need to take this out. Oh, and I can't. Okay. Um, okay. Should not be in a cold code block because we don't want to, we should not describe all the alternatives, all the backup alternatives here. Right? Link them to the correct page. All right, ready to continue our reading? I am. Oh, let's take the backup. Okay, so where is... Oh. This is completely unnecessary since we tell them to do a backup and they read the directions not needed. Either include it in the backup or download it again. Okay, now the capitalization here is hokey. So download the new LTS version. Oh no, this is not how it's done. Okay, no. All right, this is not at all how we don't, we must not upgrade, upgrade by copying in a new WAR file, if the previous installation was done, done with a DEB file or an RPM. Okay. Since we, since we don't upgrade, must be performed by the same command that performed the initial install. Or the same type of command as the initial install. That is specific to the operating system distribution, to the Linux distribution. So this is gonna need significant rework. Okay, start the Jenkins service. And again, this is system control, start Jenkins, if I remember right. Isn't that what we saw earlier? 
starting system. Yes, system control start. Okay. Use system D, not system five in it. Okay. So given that, it feels like maybe we should remove this entire section of stop this because none of you don't have to do the stop if you use the operating system tooling it will do the stop for you the backup maybe we should include that that's a that's a healthy thing we don't need this one so maybe what we do is we have a a single step which is take the backup and everything else gets deleted. What is that? Okay, this is wrong. Okay, this is, is I don't know where uh, that's, that's wrong and been wrong for a while. Okay, good. So, and this one, I don't know. All right. So we've got this, this needs significant rework because Vandit has also placed these headings in a different style than the installing Jenkins headings. So if we look here, Red Hat CentOS is a much a much higher level of heading, and I think that's the, the the way we would prefer it. So here in Linux, there should be Red Hat CentOS, Debian. What are the others that are there? Debian, oh Fedora, right, and then Red Hat and CentOS. Okay, so Meg, my apologies, major, major changes here. And I think this will best be done by um, by me or somebody else going through and reworking this pull request yeah. to, to fit the same as the current as the current documentation structure. Okay. It's still a nice start, even if it needs work. It is well, and it's it's a very brave and bold start, right? That's that's really great. It's wonderful that that such a, a bold move to say, "Hey, I'm going to do this." Okay, so as far as I know, let's test this and see if this is still a real issue. I'm not aware of that being a real issue. Resolved five years ago. Yeah, as far as I know, that is just, that is no longer relevant. So this issue was fixed five years ago. No need to mention it. Okay. And then this one uh, is no longer no longer required as of Jenkins as of the Jenkins transition because due to the Jenkins transition from system five in it to system D. Okay, so that's that's improved. And this is no longer needed. Uh, 
Okay, whoops, 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 here. And we've got another one that's a, an interesting problem. Here, you'll you'll enjoy this one. <laughs> hmm. So what we see here, no, nope, no, nope, just a minute. Okay, so... no longer needed okay the next one this is a fun one because you'll recognize it from previous experience update the <laughs> controller with apt-get install update operation center with some other command uh -huh. uh, and so the answer here is jenkins does not have anything called operation center that is a cloud that is a part of the cloud beast products we don't document we rely on cloud bees to document their products Okay, now this one, same thing. It's is it zipper install? I thought it was zipper upgrade. Okay, now I've got to go do a quick check, Meg. Just a minute. One Susie, what does it do? Dist upgrade. Hmm. Okay, let's try it. Upgrade Jenkins. Not upgrade, update. Okay. So it says, hey, you're already at the newest version, mm -hmm. but it is up, update Jenkins, not upgrade. Okay. There. All right. All right, onwards. Whoops, where my okay. So then this. All right, now Mac OS. Okay, Mac OS is a separate page. Oh, here it is. Okay, and this is a separate page. Okay. Okay. Warns other systems. FreeBSD. When you install from PKG, upgrade with PKG and use PKG update. Okay. And then PKG upgrade Jenkins. All right. Let's double check that. Update. Yes. Okay. Update the repositories and then upgrade. 
Upgrade a package to a newer version. Okay. Okay, upgrade and package name. Yep, so that's right. That's good, yep. Okay. And then is it on FreeBSD man service? Because they use system five in it. Service restart. No, script and commit. Yes, okay, good. Service script command. Okay, so let's see. So service script. Yes, that's right. Okay, so FreeBSD looks good. Now on the war file. Okay, if you run this, replace the war file. No, okay, so this is describing. The Jenkins war file can be this line. Seems like this line is described was describing something different. Not an upgrade. I've got it. Forgot all this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but wasn't that the, that was the war file? You didn't actually upgrade. You removed the old war file and put the new one in. Correct. So what you do is, re, and that's what they say is replace okay. the Jenkins war file with the latest version. Right. So, but this needs to say, down. It says download it to an appropriate directory, and then run the command. Open it. Yeah, okay. I don't know why that statement is there. Open a terminal command. So it, it really shouldn't just be replace the war file. Yeah. Download a new version and replace it. But it's oh, go ahead. I don't mind the extra. It's it's always amazing some of these people that are doing really sophisticated things, how they mess up on the simplest stuff. So right. So extra words here are probably okay. Right. Makes sense. So given that we're we're pretty much out of time, I'd say let's leave this. Well, maybe we can see through this, this Windows step. Okay, upgrade steps on Windows. Okay, this needs this needs instructions. needs instructions that guide the user to upgrade with the same technique whoops no that's the wrong way one question for needs instructions to guide the user to upgrade with the same technique they used for installation If they installed with MSI, they should upgrade with MSI. If they installed by copying the war file, they should upgrade by replacing the war file. Right. Okay, good. Meg, you've been heroically patient through this. Thank you very much. I'm just impressed that some kid did all. I mean, God, I hate doing this, but because he's got all of these different options. Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. Nice this this said. is really detailed, complicated stuff, right? It's uh -huh. it's enormously so. And so, yes.
make and make okay stack scribe and I reviewed this during Doc's office hours. 20 January 2023. Uh, recording is a, will be available if it helps. Great. I'm going to submit. Thank you. So Meg, I'd propose we call a, a an end for that to that this effort for the moment. We're just a few minutes before an hour. And I need I need some downtime. Are you okay with that? I'm absolutely fine with that. All right. So so we, we made of something. Good, good. We did, yes. Uh 40 plus minutes of review of the pull request in the office hours. Great. All right. Thanks very much, should, Meg. So should we just for record, do we say anything to say that this somebody's doing a really good job here? Yes, Bandit's work on this pull request is is impressive. I mean, I you know, if I see that it, that you spent forty minutes of reviewing and didn't approve it, I'd like, you know, is somebody in over their head and it's like, no, it, you had just bit off a big chunk. Right, right. Great, great details and great content on a huge topic. We never expected that a new contributor. would work on the work on the upgrade guide and to do such good work on it and do such a good job right yeah great yeah put it down for people who don't watch the recording make sure that's mm -hmm. yeah right. and and the next one what is the next one i don't suppose is a small small enough one that we're going to get rid of it well the next one is is needs a an installation to duplicate the instructions. Okay. And in order to do the install, it will take much more than two minutes to do the install. Right. I mean, I love, I love that they did it. Light HTTPD is a really nice reverse proxy. Ah, and, yeah. and so just like Nginx and Squid and Apache, we've got one more way to do reverse proxying. And and so it's it's very nice that they they did the writing, but this particular example, it feels like it's written by somebody who is an expert in light HTTPD, and I'm not. So I'll be when I read it, I'll do things that probably would surprise them. Which is good. Well, it it helps us make the documentation better, right? It's okay. An amateur did it and said, "Gee, I need to know this and this and this." Yep. But not a quick review. No, 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 definitely not. Great, we're getting these substantive. It, it really is. It's quite impressive, the content that we're getting. So really delightful. Yeah. Any other topics we need to go over, Meg? I don't think so. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You 